Morning, guys. All right, looks like we are live, getting good connection right now, surprisingly. All right, guys, let's get started. So good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the live stream. We first review the watch list, then we trade the market open every day. Hope everyone had a good start to their day, big breakfast, whatnot, maybe some workout. Let's um, let's see what we got here. Uh, today is, what is it? It's Friday the 19th of June. Uh, we're starting a little bit early here for uh, internet connection issues. Uh, lately here in this country house, it's been a little bit choppy in the beginning. So hopefully by starting early, we can get some of that buffering out of the way um, before the market opens. Um, yeah, so right now it's 9.11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we got 19 minutes before the market opens at 9.30. We'll wrap up trading maybe a little bit earlier today, probably around, um, definitely by 11.30, um, unless it's really, really hot um, and we wanna you know, keep, keep trading, but uh, most likely I'll be wrapping up early. <clears throat> Check out the video description below for some FAQs and let's dive into it. So uh, I did a little tiny pre-market trade this morning. I used you know, half position size. Um, we we're getting a nice uh, descending triangle pattern and we just broke out of it here. And I was looking for a nine minute pullback. We had decent volume on the breakout as well, um, but it didn't happen. We didn't get the resolution, totally fine. And um, this this drop actually was pretty quick, uh, 7% drop and I sold, I tried to get out pretty much as fast as possible. Um, so I got actually out about 4%. So we bought around, where did we buy? 44.6. And then we sold right around here at uh, 43.13. So yeah, it looks like a three, four percent loss. Not really too bad, and that's why we use half position size in the morning, so we don't, you know, get ourselves in a pickle. The important part about this one is cutting our losses very, very quickly. This whole move was about 16%. So you want to cut your losses quickly. Uh, I can't really, you know, hone in that lesson enough. Um, a little bit unfortunate with you one though because I was also watching COHN and I was about to get an entry on this red candle here at 17.5. And then I don't know what happened. I think I was looking at this entry, whatever. Uh, I turned away from this one for a second and then this green candle happened. And then I was thinking about chasing it right here at 1865. And uh, this one ran off without me, which is unfortunate because this one ran up 30%. So this morning could have really went either way. Uh, but oh well, that's always why I do have position size. You know, it, the morning pre-market's not gonna be really game changer for me, but um, sometimes it gives me a feel over the overall market. And honestly, U1 is a stock that I just haven't really been wanting to trade at all. Um, I've been a little overly biased on it. And honestly, yesterday, uh, during the end of the recap, or during just, uh, wh when was this? This was, I don't know, sometime during the live stream. We were calling out uh, U1 quite a bit when we were pulling back to this $22 zone. This could be a nice breakout. Uh, we called out this breakout here right before the halt. This was a really, really nice run. Um, I just kept on missing it every time. So right now we had, again, kind of these descending triangle um, kind of flag pattern, and uh, I jumped on it this time. This time it didn't work out. So I don't know, U1, I'm too conservative on when I should be hot, I guess, and and I don't know, not not aggressive enough uh, when I should be, but I don't know. It's, uh, U1's definitely, it, it reminds me of GNPX, he's on the wrong side of that one, but it is what it is. So let's, let's keep going here, you know, um, don't wanna get too much in the hole, um, but I think we could dig ourselves out of it. We just gotta, you know, f find the right mover and then get on it, get aggressive, uh, so. Let's, let's see what we're gonna find here. Um, out of the gates, there's not really much to say about U1. We've been trading this one, or not trading it, but following it for the last, um, basically, you know, I think, what was it? It was either Tuesday or Wednesday, I think, when it popped up for the first time. Pre-market right now, 130% gapping. Um, doesn't have a sh float um, on Finviz, but the share's outstanding 45 million. Also, it's kind of sister ticker U1K, which is for the, um, non-voting shares, that's what the K stands for at 19 million float, I don't know. Am I gonna trade you one again? Maybe. Um, I'm not gonna say yes, I'm not gonna say no. If we see the right setup, I will trade it. Otherwise, I don't know. Um, it is, in my eyes, super overextended, um, but I don't wanna be overly biased on it. I mean, it was at 95 cents a few weeks ago, now it hit a high of $55 on no news. There's no news about this. So, um, you know, it's, it's probably being, you know, pumped and dumb, I, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know, and I don't even really care, but we'll, we'll see. If, if, if it's the right trading stuff, then then we'll go to it. The right patterns. Uh, 
<laughs> one HP Pro. Yeah, I try to keep it keep it interesting. Let me just go through the chat here, make sure I'm not missing any questions. So I'll, I'll definitely, I always answer more questions near the end of the stream. Sometimes um, I, from one, like 130 to like 150, sometimes it's really, really hard to answer questions or like maybe like nine, uh, 930 to 945 or something like that because the first 15 minutes are very hot. So um, I always try to take pauses and answer some questions. Just early on, it's a little bit more difficult. One hundred percent, one AP Pro, and thanks for reminding everybody. Yeah, this is this is not for stock picks. This is not for um, just copying my trading. Uh, everyone has a different strategy. Everyone has a different reason why they want to enter and exit a trade. Um, you know, I'm just sharing what I'm doing here, and uh, kind of, you know, it's it's about the community, and we're all learning from each other. Um, but we're not here to copy each other. So uh, hopefully, you guys can learn something from my trading and what we talk about here. But um, yeah, copying trading is, is a, is a slippery slope and I do not recommend it. There's actually quite a lot of stuff on the scanner this morning. I wasn't totally even sure what the lead gappers were going to be. Um, cause I felt like around nine o'clock, maybe we we're going to have some new lead gappers popping up. So I, I didn't want to be overly fixated on any certain, um, certain gapper. So I'll go keep on going through the list, um, but very quickly here, let's go ahead and review COHN, 100% pre-market gapping. And I think it's even much more than that now, just from roughly here. Yeah, almost 200%. So this one's made a huge move in the last um, like 20, 30 minutes here. The float on COHN, I think makes it really, really interesting, guys. 0.22 million float. This is tiny. US capital company, pers um, the president, Daniel Cohen, um, has a 74.61% share or stake um, in what that is. We would have to go through the 13D to see what the actual increase was, but um, yeah, it's a big, pretty big in increase or just, you know, in general um, position to be holding here. So I got COHN on my other chart. Maybe we'll do another pre-market trade. I'm not really sure. Um, big volume coming in on this one. Let's see if it's going to break 22.5 any moment. I wouldn't be surprised. Welcome, Brandon. There's a $25,000 challenge uh, video in the video description below under the FAQ section, kind of talking about what we do here. Uh, and then we just trade the market open every day. So if you want to learn more about kind of day trading small caps and the gap go challenge, just, you know, con continue, uh, you know, sticking around. Um, 1AP Pro is definitely right. Just watch a bunch of YouTube videos. I mean, there's a lot of good free information out here. Um, that's why I don't, I don't charge for anything. You know, it's, I think you can find everything out for free mostly. It just might not be as structured. That's probably the biggest difference. Whoo, COHN guys just broke to a new high here. Really, really hot stock. This is good fun to watch. Let's keep kind of browsing along here. U1K pulling back a little bit. Man, I'm so on edge with the U1 uh, stocks. I, I'm not really sure if I'm going to be trading them anymore. Uh, BYFC, this is really nice. BYFC was actually going to be my lead gapper today. Um, 7.5 million float, 184% gapping. US Bank it might be a sympathy play um, from all the other stocks we've seen like U1. That's kind of what I'm thinking. But nice little bounce here back to the upside. I got to say BYFC, impressive little move here. I was not expecting this. We've been seeing so many stocks pulling back so hard and then fully recovering. Um, in the past, it wasn't always the case. Usually when a stock goes under 30%, you could pretty much wave it goodbye. Um, but lately, we've been seeing the most insane rebounds. Um, so... The K stands for um, non-voting shares. So it's a different classification of shares that you're buying. Kind of like common stock versus preferred stock. C 
COHN still rallying here. AMP looks kind of interesting. Sub dollar though, would like to see this one go a little higher first. IMRN is holding its holding the ten dollar zone pretty well. Could be an interesting stock, maybe above twelve again. Auto, that's a funny ticker. LITB, this is a ticker, light in the box, a Chinese online retail company that we somehow have traded so many. I think I traded this for the first time in like 2016 or so. Um, this one's just on and off on our scanner. It's kind of funny. Uh, 37 million floats, 70% gapping up this morning. Q1 results, so technically good results, but... Um, I don't know. I think there's there's going to be better stuff out here. SHLL, 24 million float, US conglomerate. They have a merger and they're going to be remaining their listing on New York Stock Exchange. So that's technically good news as well. Um, they look like they're up quite a bit, but more like 70%. So it's not as high as you might imagine. ANPC, very likely traded pre-market. So yeah, I think um, the way COHN is trading pre-market is definitely gonna be our lead gapper here, 100%. CARV from yesterday is holding its highs okay. Might be an interesting break if we move above uh, 16, 15 zone. Yeah, so we were talking about SAF earlier today um, in the beginning of the stream. And uh, this one was, I was thinking about making this one the lead gap around the day. Uh, it just sold off quite a bit, but overall it is looking pretty, pretty hot. I gotta say, um, I'm surprised it bounced so hard back up. Big resistance at $4. Let's see if we can kind of break above $4, but I probably would like to trade BYFC. This is also one of the gappers from yesterday. I would like to see that break above four and then right around six and eight, we got some interesting kind of dollar zone. So it seems like bigger resistance uh, every $2 on this one. Woo, itchy nose. I'm not the biggest fan of that selling pressure though. I just, it's been a bit weird how this one sold off so aggressively. I think um, COHN is really the lead gapper that I think most people are looking at and this is gonna be the most obvious lead gapper. Let's quickly go ahead and review some parts of it again. Very nice open here. The CEO having a 74.61% stake. Right now it's at $23.8. So we're trending right above this kind of resistance zone. Twenty-two point eight, so like twenty-three, and then twenty-five. Some interesting zones to think about. Twenty seven again. This is going to be pretty big open, I think, with COHN. Also, remember, guys, if you forgot, 0.22 million float on COHN. That's really, really small. This thing has explosive potential in all sorts of directions. USA Capital Markets Company. 
very high and they sell off. Here's one that opens high and actually continues up. So it doesn't seem like a multi-day runner though. As a lot of these kind of one day, one day moves, which makes today kind of a little bit more interesting because this is actually a third, this is gonna be the third big green day. Although yesterday was a bit more of a engulfing candle on the inside, hold its held its highs okay around 7.7 .7 though. Yeah, I did cruiser. Although I think that one's already totally overextended as it is, or at least priced in. Yep, just start watching a lot of free YouTube videos. That's a good way to good way to start. I have some FAQs in the video description below um, if you guys are wondering about you know what platform we're using, uh, about the challenge and all that stuff. So good place to start off as well. Yeah, APT, that Alpha Protection Company. I gotta say, COHN is so, so high right now. This thing out of the gates might just shoot past 25. I wouldn't even be surprised. I also wouldn't be surprised if it absolutely just shot down. I'm gonna be probably a little bit more cautious here out of the gates. Uh, I really wanted to trade this one pre-market, so that miss at $18 was a little bit unfortunate. I thought that was like a perfect pullback, um, but yeah, it is what it is. Oh yeah, I could check that out. Yeah, Satoshi, never a bad idea. Um, always, always good to know that sometimes cash is the best position. Let's go back to U1. Kind of see what this puppy's doing here at the open. It's going to be also very interesting. Way, way, way above my typical price range. I usually love stocks between 2 and $7. Right now, both of our lead gappers are well over 30 Actually, well over 20 bucks. So 24 and uh, $40. So huge, huge stuff. All right, guys. Another 40 seconds to the market opens here. Good luck, everyone. Remember, there's no rush. Here we go, 10 seconds. <clears throat> COHN pulling higher here really quickly. Two twenty big buyers on it. C O H N halted. U one selling off a little bit, kind of holding the highs. B Y F C. Bit of a sympathy play here on the banks. 
Can we break $4 on this one? Two sixty eight big buyers. Nice little bounce off VWAP here. Instantly flying higher. Seeing like I get a quick entry here if we get a dip. Nope, breaking out higher, looking really good. Strong move. Potential entry on a quick pullback here. BYFC, huge breakout, might get halted. I think BYFC just got halted here. Wow, 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 wow. Nice move. That was a 30% move, guys. BYFC, huge stuff. I was watching this pullback. I didn't I didn't jump on it. I don't know why. That would have been actually a really, really good one. 932 here. COHN still halted. It's gonna open up at 35 roughly. So I'm gonna give this one a little bit of time. Slipped my entry as well, yeah. So, SHLL, another one lead gapper right now. 24 million float. The merger news. It's going to be interesting how this one goes. A little bit of a red degree move. I'm not the biggest fan of it based on the, the percentage moves on SHLL. I'm going to pull up COHN when it um, opens up here again. Nice, Peter. In and out. That's how you do it. Good morning, then. So we got BYFC and COHN both above 100% here. It looks like those are the main ones that are up so much. Um, also, remember, my scanner doesn't pick up um, after a certain point. That's why some of these aren't going to be showing up. COHN is going to open up any second. This could be maybe a 10 minute hold. I'm going to keep it up here. I'll let you guys know when it's moving. I'm sure you guys will see it as well. 01K had a huge bounce off of 4. BYFC is going to open up at 37.
<laughs> yeah, one AP pro, literally, that's true. Wow, BYFC was just such an explosion. Really, really sweet. I'm not sure what kind of pullback we're going to get on this one. PT was another ticker we were looking at earlier today. 90% gapper, 20 million flow, Chinese credit company with corporation of a big Chinese telecom, best pay. So this one could actually be a really good runner today as well. Big support of 1.7. PT breaking out right now. BYFC about to open up here. Whoo, huge open higher. This might get halted again here. Watching PT. Big, big, big move here with BYFC. Five forty five. Wow, wow, wow. With a seven point five million float, I gotta say this move is very aggressive for the, the float. stop yo congrats to anyone jumping on this like crazy right now byfc got halted again here or no no it didn't i thought it did for a second That was an absolutely wild, wild move. Not even sure if it's over, but that was just, for now, pretty insane. Quick little pullback here on BYFC. I got PT on my other chart looking for an entry on that one. C-O-H-N still halted here. At least it looks like it. Yeah, 22. Or maybe, no, it just, it just opened up. I was looking at it. I was like, it's not moving. And then it just opened up here. C-O-H-N, guys, breaking higher. Could be a quick pullback here on C-O-H-N.
Today's one of those days where not a lot makes sense. COHN might get halted here on the way down. Just had a quick pullback. BYFC potential entry at four dollars. Looks like a VWAP bounce might take place here at 4.4. There's stuff flying all over the place. Really nice bounce here, 12%. Nice, Tyrone. Woo -hoo! That was some explosive business. Out of the gates on, on everything. PT, a little bit slow here. Could see another pullback as well. Watching it closely, had nice open volume though. A little bit of a slow mover compared to what else we got here. Just absolutely insane. Charts aren't really loading right now. TOS has been so slow this week. It's been um, probably one of the more laggy weeks we've experienced. Markets are all green, roughly 1% up across the board. Yeah, I probably will switch at one point from TOS, but I'm going to probably use it for, I don't know, for, for at least a good little bit longer. Um, and then I wouldn't mind switching, even if I had to pay fees. But it's really hard to trade the gap and go strategy with TOS. Um, the amount of slippage and just delays you kind of face is, makes it very, very hard to trade it properly. PT pulling back a little bit here. DAS Tr Trader Pro. I haven't heard about that one yet. U1K, quick, quick pullback here. Looks like it was also halted. SHLL has not really moved much. I'm not really surprised about that. OVID, uh, quick little pullback. CARV, yeah, this one um, kind of a failed breakout here past 16. Doesn't look too hot. PT on a critical 1.6 level right now. A lot of sellers above it. I am RN, guys. It doesn't look too bad. Kind of a bit of a bull flag here. I 
I'm RN with a 3 million flow Australian biotech partners with a, another company, CSIRO, to produce oral therapeutics for U.S. Department of Defense. So pretty big uh, deal there. Plus the 3 million flow at 100% gapping pre-market. A lot of kind of hot stuff about this one. Might be a little bit overshadowed today. It also is on the backside of a bigger move. So it has really, really big resistance here around 12, 11.5, 13. Yeah, Satoshi, that's true. A lot of these halts have been great dip by opportunities. LMFA guys, look at this one kind of crawling back on the charts here. Had a nice little move in the morning. PT kind of just pulling back. 948, so far only one trade in for me. COHN still pulling back, got halted. Yeah, PT doesn't look too hot at the moment. U1K has big support at 4.5. Could be a little bit of a bounce here. Gotta say, I'm probably most interested in trading BYFC. I think we're gonna have uh, maybe another bit of a pullback. Looks like kind of like a bear flag right now. I'm gonna give it a little bit of time here. We're gonna pull up to 9.50, 9.55 really soon here. It's one of my favorite times to uh, look for reversals and whatnot. So I'm gonna keep a close eye on that. I'm RN breaking out here a little bit. Put a fairly, see if we can get an entry on IMRN. Three million float, big catalyst today. This could be a hot mover. Let's see if there's a dip under 12.
entry here on IMRN potentially 211, 12, 12, 12, 10, 05. Quick pullback here. Wasn't super confident with this one, so I actually removed my limit order. It's definitely, IMRN is, is a really nice stock and any other day I would be way more aggressive on it, but the fact that we have so many other hard gappers makes me feel like it's gonna be overshadowed and that's why I was a little bit cautious here. Um, but this whole week I'm a little bit cautious. Um, kind of on a little bit of travel with low internet, so no need to rush into anything. We got plenty of time here. COHN, I'm still watching it on the other screen. BYFC pulling back here. Man, it is just crazy, crazy day. So U1K is at a lot of dip buyers in this area. Wouldn't be surprised if it did have a bit of a healthy balance. The lead stocks. This is the one I wanted to get pre-marketed by Miss, and I got U1 instead. Coming up to sixteen dollars, big support and resistance there. Always good to be a little bit more cautious on a Friday. I don't think that's a bad idea, Michael. I've been, I'm also waiting for a pullback, so going short is an interesting way to take this one. Looks like on TD Ameritrade though, it's NTB. So probably won't be shortable on TD. What platform are you using? Or what, what platform are you using, Michael? And do you have shares to short on it? Oh. Triple watch witching hour. It's the triple watching hour. It's the last hour of stock market trading season on the third Friday of every month. Of every March, June, September, and December. Ah, okay. It refers to a state on which derivatives. Well, I might as well put this front and center so everyone can see it. it refers to a date on which derivatives of stock index futures, stocks index options, uh, and single stock futures expire simultaneously. That's good to know. Thanks for that. I was actually not aware of that. So COHN is having a pretty nice little bounce here. Right around 16, ripped up on, now back to 20. I'm RN pulled right back. 
we could have maybe got away with like a three four percent trade on this one but it would have had to be a perfect entry and kind of a perfect exit not saying it's not possible but kind of like what i see here PT had a bit of a bounce in this area as well. Guys, we have CHCI breaking higher here With 73 million loan from Freddie Mac, 2.6 million float, 120% gapping up pre-market. It was a bit lighter traded today. Yeah, CHCI is hard to borrow, it looks. Little pop to the upside on BYFC. BBGI, one I haven't really been looking at as closely. Maybe we can hit that $6 zone. Big support here at four. Nine fifty nine. Gonna take a quick break and be right back. Look at that dip on BBGI. CHCI guys ripping up really, really aggressively right now. Big move on this one.
bring a blow believe break below VWAP here. CRV could be breaking back up. Just no volume on it. Check out, just, you know, be a little bit cautious here with this volume. Very, very low. I am RN, a little bit of a disappointment here. So hoping for better resolution on that one. Yeah, BYFC is dipping here. My alerts did not go off. This first pullback we had was about 30%. That was a really, really aggressive one. I don't think we're going to get something similar. Getting some backside moves right now. Gee. Take care, man. Beautiful. Big bounce on BYFC. I gotta say, I was not expecting such a big bounce. AP Pro. I think we all have our strategies for those situations. COHN definitely could be a double bottom. Not sure if I want to try that out though. I'm wondering if BBGI is actually a bigger flag pat pattern. This could start breaking back above here at four. Keeping a close eye on it and how I would like to trade it.
Hopefully the internet speed pack, um, picks up a little bit here, guys. I apologize for that. It's still going to be a little bit. Today's definitely the last day, though. Um, we'll be back in Berlin uh, by Monday, and then we'll be ready to go full speed. BYFC, guys, I got to say this bounce looks much better than I would have expected it to. I'll pull up OXBR. $1.4 million volume. Very, very light volume on this one. But if you're not trading a lot, this could be a really nice, uh, nice snag here. Doesn't look like it has any catalyst. Huge move on BBGI, guys. Hit a new high here. So this flag pattern was right. To be honest, I was not expecting such a big move so quickly here so far. Placing a limit order at 415 on BBGI, just kind of put it there, a little placeholder. I'm watching BYFC. This one look, could be pretty nice reversal at one point, keeping a close eye on it. BBGI approaching $5. Hundred percent on a anyone's ticker. Oof, that's 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 ballsy. B B G I looks like a setup here. here Just got an entry here with BBGI. Let's see if we can have a little bit more continuation on this one. Sold most of my position here.
sold the last bit of my position. I wanted to sell the position sooner, but I was having some issues with TOS again. Have another limit order ready to go just in case. It was a little bit annoying just now. It is what it is though. Could see some bigger buyers here above four. Putting it over here because I want to watch BYFC as well. BBGI could be another entry if we break over the former high for last candle. Not getting that breakout yet that I was hoping for. Could be a pullback here. BYFC having a nice breakout. Huge breakout. BYFC. Five twenty two big buyers. BBGI breaking out as well. Hmm, missed that one. May potential entry on fifty four. BBGI breaking out here. Missed this entry, had an entry at 59. Um, was a little bit too slow on my entry though. Maybe we'll get an entry at 63. Removing my limit order for now. You know what? 63 was just hit. Bouncing. Yeah, I was I was undecided. I was back between BYFC and BBGI. I should have just stuck with one. Uh, again, would have worked. Would be up 10 cents a share right now if I just stuck with that limit order. Oh man, Heiko, you are playing with fire on that. Congrats for getting out with a, even a profit. That's a big position size. B 
BBGI looking really healthy here, breaking out. Looking for an entry at 83. Whew, right when I say that. Maybe we'll get a quick pullback on 89. Being too cautious on this one. Talk about missing the entry on BBGI uh, like six times in a row. Um, oh well, that just happens sometimes. Here we're having a little bit of a pullback under $5. Let's see if we can do tickers. Uh, was just a little bit too much. I probably should have gave it a little bit of a rest there. I typically look doing at the following candles. Um, so if I was buying this breakout and we were dipping below these candles right here, which was the breakout zone at 26, I'd probably be getting looking for an exit. Uh, 40 cents is really where I'm forcing a, forcing an exit. So those are kind of my two mental stops. Ten twenty three now. Looks like BYFC is having a bit of a pullback here. BBGI also breaking a little bit lower. Big resistance at 515 on BBGI. I wonder if we're gonna get a big crack past that zone. All right, we can look at AEMD a little bit later here. But good question, I'd like to check it out as well. BBGI pulling back a little bit. Ten twenty five AM
BYFC, our league capper on the day, guys, is, is definitely still making headway here. 7.5 million float. Maybe BBGI could be an entry at one point. But I feel like it's a little bit top heavy at the moment. So I probably want to see a little bit bigger of a pullback. BBGI might break $5 here. See if BYFC pulls back a little bit further. Man, we got so much moving today. It's just insane. CHCI, just constant pulling back here. Um, could, could see some bigger support, especially at, if it breaks 3.5 into the 40s or 30s. Could be a nice little dip by zone. Uh, AEMD, wow, big bounce off 255. Holding its highs though today in terms of uh, engulfing candle, big support at like 2.6. So it's kind of holding this area pretty interesting. We'll be interesting to see if this actually has another big run on maybe Monday or so if, if we hold today where it is. Yep, yep, Corey, good call on that. The selling volume on BBG, I still favors long. I totally agree. I'm still pretty uh, hooked on that one, watching it closely. COHN, this one is back above VWAP. This could be could be a really nice play a little bit later today. I like the percentage moves on it. I'll definitely put a I'll start watching it again. BYFC breaking higher here. BYFC could be breaking six any moment. This is a critical zone. BBGI pulling back as well. Limit order on BYFC at 47, just in case we get a nice little dip pullback here. Not sure if we will. Looking for a potential dip buy as well on BBGI under the 
probably too conservative of a potential entry, but I might go ahead and try to buy this breakout here. This looks like the move you want to be looking for. Looks like we might be breaking six any second here. Five eighty eight. It's definitely still some sellers here. A little bit shaky of a breakout. I wouldn't be surprised if it had one little pullback. TOHN breaking out higher. All right, Jamin, take care. BB, BYFC could be an entry here. Quick little pullback. Did not reach my limit order. At 47, 547. Remove my limit order on BBGI. I think BYFC could be breaking out any moment at $6. Five ninety getting chipped away here. This could be the breakout zone. Bit more selling in the game right now. Pretty even distribution of volume, I gotta say. Uh, BBGI guys breaking out here.
580. Ooh, this is definitely a choppy one on BYFC. Our lead gapper at $300 million volume on the day. 7.5 million float. Let's see if we can get an entry here near the high at 85. Remove my limit order for now. I think I'm going to stumble over myself if I keep looking at B. I think I was. I missed a few entries actually on it already. Uh, need to stop looking at it. I feel like I've been in this spot before where I start making mistakes because I'm just looking at it the whole time. 595 though, it is pulling back a little bit. Got to be careful. IMRN, guys. Kind of making a nice little pull up here. BBGI looks pretty good as well. All right, Manny, take care. Don't forget to drop a like on the way out, man, if you enjoy the content. I'll see you Monday. Whew. Yeah, so BYFC, guys, this one, I mean, I've just been staring at, like, uh, like it's my job. I was a little bit, you know, constantly missing these entries, and there's a lot of shakeout potential. Um, it's a bit of a tricky one to trade, just the way it moves a little bit slower. It is 1039. It's not, you know, the ideal gap and go time anymore. Uh, so you do have to be a little bit careful with these, and sometimes they have these really mean flushes um, as they start creeping up. So I just didn't... Um, I didn't want to be part of that anymore. Nice, Heiko. See, Heiko's got a good strategy. He drops the like first thing in the morning. I know a lot of you guys do that. I definitely appreciate all of it. We had a pretty nice, nice turnout already in the morning. Putting a limit order in BYFC at 27, just kind of put it here and put put a reminder on my head. Really healthy here, and I kind of hope it keeps on how I would trade BYFC. So consistent um, the whole time. It's kind of kind of crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this limit order. It's no more kind of relevant. It's just a little bit ago. Nice, Jay. 525, that's that's a pretty sweet hold. Congrats, man. Always a good idea, Fred. Happy to have you here. Either is wondering if I'm a bear or a bull now. I feel like I'm a permanent bear, to be honest. Uh, which is which makes day trading a little bit tough uh, sometimes, but I trade typically long. BYFC is looking really, really good here. Maybe we'll get a nine minute pullback. That's what I'm waiting for here. Um, maybe not though. We missed uh, several really, really nice moves on BYFC so far. So uh, we'll see what we get.
a little bit more of a pullback here. Just had a quick entry here at 6.45, looking for a... Sell half position here. Let's see if we can have a little bit more of a follow through here. 62. Bigger volume we should be seeing coming up now. Fifty three pulling back a little bit more again, back in the fifties. Let's see if we can get a breakout here. I would like a breakout above seventy. Didn't work. Let's see if we can get another entry here. Gave back a bit of my profits. Watching this one here, breaking higher, 69. A little shaky move here. Yeah, I should have probably closed out all my profits when I was up 20 cents a share. Here we go. There's the break of seven that I was waiting for. Potential entry here at 73 for a continued break higher. And nope, that was the move I was waiting for. I'm gonna go ahead and close this one. Yep, my trading uh, system T TOS is very laggy. That's actually a big reason why I miss a lot of these breakouts. Uh, I don't really wanna blame the system, but I, I gotta say in the first 15 minutes, it's 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 very tricky because it's I'm like intervaled uh, on my trading. So I might switch the trading platform at one point. Um, yeah, I mean, this breakout was exactly what I wanted. Uh, I sold half the position. I was looking for that continued break. I didn't get the continued break right out of the gates, and then I sold the other half. So I could have been a little bit more patient here. Um, so that's a little bit unfortunate. I could have easily walked away with like 5% on that trade. Oh, well, it is what it is. I do think BYFC, you know, uh, as, as the lead gapper, I probably should have gave it a little bit more... Um, a little bit more grace period since, um, I mean, it is the lead gapper. Nice small flow to 7.5 million. So yeah, I probably should have kind of let it go a little bit. Just a little bit slow here. Much slower than uh, I would typically want uh, one of these breakouts to happen. What I could have done, what I should have done actually, is take my profits at 60 Look for a re-entry under 40 and then ride that one again. Uh, I think that probably would have been the way to do it. I feel like every time I sell half position size, sometimes I trip over myself. And that's exactly what happened here on this one. I just couldn't get out in time when that 61 did not crack. But oh well. Learning opportunity for not just myself, but for everyone. Yeah, Corey, that's very true. I couldn't argue more with that. I was thinking that in the back of my head, and I was like, mm, I should really, really let this one go a little bit longer. Uh, uh, trade, basically $200. Uh, so yeah, it would have been pretty sweet. Yeah.
Yeah, it's just been so, so wicked out here lately. Quick pullback here on BYFC. This is kind of what I was nervous to get kind of stuck in. I don't really think this is the end, but let's see. Maybe it could even could be an opportunity uh, for an entry. Stock is flying. $420 million volume so far on the day. No, I don't use a trailing stop. I will do that sometimes on my swing trades and my investments, but not for my day trades. I don't use stops on my day trades, uh, at least automated stops. Kind of looks like the 9-minute EMA is showing some signs of weakness here for the, if this bounce, but volume is still on the, all the breakout candles on the green candle, so that's still technically a good sign, but we'll see. I wouldn't be surprised if we still had some sort of blow-off top, but um, maybe it's going to take a little breather here. Also wouldn't be the most surprising thing. Six eighty looks like it's gonna crack here. Six seven seven. Markets are still green overall. That's a good question. I haven't really been watching SHLL too much. Mm, yeah, I don't know. This is the one that was just very, very slow. Not a lot of volume. I wouldn't be surprised if it just kept selling off all day. Right now, it's more of like potential dip buys at, at some points, but... BYFC really kind of playing with fire here. Could potentially dip under 6.75 really hard at any moment. This could be this could be a bit of the dip right here. 70 yeah. Uh, Definitely broke that last candle. This would my I would be getting stopped out right now, one hundred percent.
check out U1K. It's still exactly where we left it at, like 4.5. That thing hasn't really been moving too much, but it has a lot of dollar volume behind it. There's some aggressive dip buyers on BYFC. <laughs> Appreciate that, Kyle. Nothing like a little bit of like button tickling. BYFC, guys. Doesn't look like it wants to get up, give up here. Looking really, really strong again. I don't think I'm going to be trading it, but it looks... Yeah, Jay, it looks interesting. I got to say, it does. Thanks, Josh, and take it easy, man. 250 on OXBR, that's beautiful. Can't really ask for a better Friday. We're up just a bit here on Friday, but uh, nothing really too too crazy. BYFX, trying to break higher here. Can't believe it. BBGI pulling back here a little bit. Definitely some big support above four. BBGI trying to dip a little bit one more time here. We would get a little bit harder of a pullback on BBGI, but it looks like in the low teens or mid mid teens even, there's just so much support. So I didn't get an entry on this one. I was watching it very closely though. COHN. It's like having like a quadruple bottom at 17. I'm not sure if I've traded just yet. PYFC pulling back maybe a little bit here.
Oh yeah, OBXR has been... F really nice potential pull entries there. 50% here, huge mover. A little bit light on volume today. That's why I was a little iffy on it, but so far so good. I can hear printers in Washington. I can hear my freaking lawn chair over here giving me back. Old aggressive pullback here at six. Not even negative news, but it definitely shook the ticker. BYFC might sell off one more time here. It looks like it's going to break six. All right, Corey, man, take care. Always a good time seeing you. I'll see you first thing on Monday, hopefully. Woo -hoo -hoo, BYFC pulling off again. Really aggressive. Let's see if we can go back above six. I was thinking maybe we would hit the 70s for a little bit, but we only got to like 81. OVI, do you have any left to come back? I'm not sure. I was not really looking at OVI. OVID at all today. I feel like there's some better opportunities. OXBR had a nice pullback to that nine minute EMA. BYFC, small bounce, usually red flag.
Nice, David. That's what you got to do sometimes. Just wrap, wrap it up in the green uh, and be happy with the profits. Good man. Good to hear. Ooh, OXBR, big breakout here past 3.1 now all the way at 3.6. Nice move. Good call on AVCT. Yeah, just had a nice break at Juicy. COHN actually had some decent volume here as it was trying to creep higher. CHLL selling off. CARV not really too interesting. BBGI, this is the one, you know, I could have been way more aggressive on. This was a really nice 15% breakout. We only got a small piece of that. I gotta say though, BBGI, you know, breaking out higher here does look pretty good. Checking out OXBR again. This thing is on fire lately. A lot of these big one day spikers on it. Big move now above three. Potentially it's gonna hit four. Check out BBGI guys, breaking out again. Not sure where I'm going wrong with this one. Possible reversal would be YFC, BBGI. Is breaking higher here.
Possible entry on BBGI at 38, 438. UIFC still our lead gap at $500 million volume on the day. 7.5 million float, really, really nice. There is some decent volume here. We were talking about this volume spike not too long ago. COHN might try to break this high here at 1875. That's the big resistance. I would even say 1870. That's big, big, big resistance in that zone. It would be nice to see what happens. Not too much sell volume, so COHN does look pretty good actually. BBGI still pulling back a little bit. BBGI just hit 38. 37. Down to 35. Ooh, COHN, a little bit of a quick pullback here.
Remove my limit order on COHN, although I might place it back here. 34 getting some pressure. Watching BBGI, no entry yet. I'm just kind of watching it. Potential entry here at 33, maybe 32. Kind of watching it lightly here. Don't really want to get stuck in a, a light position. That's why I'm not really getting aggressive on this one. Tried a few times for a dip buy, but never got executed. Could be the reversal here. It's very light action on it. Good call on LMFA. Nice little breakout here. LMFA moving up here. It's going to have this big resistance zone right around 2.7. UIFC at, at Wow, that COHN uh, reversal was just absolutely uh, non-existent. I think I think COHN could at one point maybe be interesting again, but at the moment I just don't see a reason to trade it. And until I mean, if we break sixteen seventy eight, we might you know pull back below sixteen very very quickly. So I see kind of a lot of risk in this one, at least in the short term. So I'd rather I'd rather just kind of hold off on it. LMFA breaking 2.7 now. This was the key zone we just talked about.
BBGI pulling up a little bit here. Could have maybe squeezed out 10 cents a share on it, but could have also lost 15 cents a share in a, in a minute. So I, I don't know. That one was a bit weird. A lot of slow momentum. Not the biggest fan of those real slow movers. BYFC back above six. Pulling back here. Five minute breakout, one minute pullback above VWAP. This could be an okay breakout. XBR. I'm actually curious to check it out. Check it out in a little bit. LMFA, yeah, 269. I wonder how much more it's got in it. BYFC, around six, could be a nice little dip by. Uh, so right as I say that, it literally pulls back to six. BBGI pulling back here. Some support above four. Would possibly enter a trade above four. I have a limit order on BBGI at 12. 412, not sure if we're going to hit it. Bit of a dip by here. Just not getting the pullbacks as hard as I want them to, and then I kind of miss the entry. I don't want to then all of a sudden get stuck on a pullback that, you know, is very aggressive. So I think I'm just not going to do that um, right now. Um, honestly, I'd, I'd probably be wrapping up here really, really soon, guys. Um, it's 1126. I actually have to run a little bit earlier today. Um, so if I don't make any more trades today, I'm totally fine. This was actually a pretty cool week. It was the first week trading with a margin account. Um, 
So you can see here we did we didn't even trade that much though on the 15th uh wait 15th was what was that i think that was the weekend so that doesn't even really count right or 15th hold on let me think here for a sec no 15th with the monday i didn't even do any trades with the margin account um because um oh yeah that's we got one trade in with the ira account that's why uh margin account was not yet up next day we only got one trade the next day three trades ne yesterday four four trades um, today three trades. So we're not even trading that aggressively. Um, I'm still kind of, you know, not the best internet right now, very glitchy. This week has been the weirdest trading week, I feel like, with these like companies that are up for no catalyst. Um, finding the lead gappers is tricky. Yesterday, my scanner didn't work. So I felt like this was the week I don't really want to get super aggressive on. Uh, I know a lot of you guys were calling me out for not trading that aggressively this week, but you know, it's fine. You don't have to trade every day and sometimes cash is the best position. Uh, so I don't, um, I have no FOMO in terms of, or, you know, I'm not going to force myself to trade when I don't really feel like the need is. So today we're wrapping up small profit, 28 bucks. Um, we kind of gave back a little bit pre-market and then I really didn't let my winners run today, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, I should have took my profits fairly quickly, but then I should have, you know, re-entered when the, when the ticker was still hot. So, you know, it could have easily been like a three, four, five hundred dollar day, um, doing everything the same, just letting the winners run a little bit longer. So, whatever, it's not a red day, and hopefully it will not become a red day. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap up trading here. So, um, some nice, fun little trades we had today. Uh, overall, pretty happy. LMFA just still running here big support at 275 almost hit three dollars i'm gonna check out oxbr very quickly yeah nice little pullback here LMFA. We'll see what these guys do. I'm going to be interested to see in the recap uh, later today what some of these do. Maybe I'll do another trade. Maybe I won't. I don't know. It's always really, really hard to say um, what I'm going to do. It really depends on the market as well. So I'm going to probably, I'm going to wrap up here, guys. Uh, if you have not done so already, if you're totally new here, consider subscribing. I'd love to see you again. We go live every morning at 9.15 a.m. Uh, to review the watch list and then trade the market open. If you also, we have a recap video coming out after every trading day, uh, talking about some of the biggest lessons, some of the best stocks, what we should have, could have, would have done. Uh, and yeah, just all that fun stuff. LMFA pulling back here, 2.6, really, really nice. Could be a good bounce. Um, yeah, guys, I will see you then first thing tomorrow. Drop a like if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate all the likes. On Monday, back in Berlin, back on the standing desk, away from the lawn chairs, although I'm gonna miss it. It's been a really, really good fun here. Um, but I'm excited to get back to work in full swing. So guys, enjoy your weekend. I, I feel like we've been on weekend. So I gotta, that's, that's how, that's my mindset lately. So it's just, uh, I'm excited to get back into the, the saddle. Um, all right, guys, take care, stay safe, make some awesome trades and see you later. Ciao, ciao.